I have a pair of scissors and a small sheet just to illustrate to you how I can find out bending moment and shear force for a particular situation. For example, this is a sheet of paper and I am so used to doing this operation from my childhood cutting a, a sheet of paper using a pair of scissors. Okay. Can I analyze what kind of force is going on to this paper so that I cut this particular sheet of paper. Let us do and see. Let us say this is the sheet of paper. Let me just draw it nicely. What is happening here? <coughs> there is one leg of scissors. There is one leg of scissors pair of scissors this one leg I have drawn here okay. So that is cutting it alright. <coughs> it has to be this way because it is cutting along this. this. There is the other one which is just near this like like this okay. So that when I cut I am applying force equal and opposite force at these two points. That is not very difficult to understand. <coughs> if I apply a load over here and the load over here, the two loads that appear on the paper are exactly one and the same. So, essentially, I am applying a force P here and a force P here, and I wish to use this set of forces in order to cut the sheet of paper. <coughs> what is the distance between these two? Very small some delta alright. <coughs> Let us just blow this up and see what kind of forces appear. So I have a P over here and a P over here okay. There is a small delta that rotates it <coughs> okay. I am not showing that particular uh, side of it by holding it tight and applying there is a slight movement that takes place and that resistance is taken by my hand okay. <coughs> if I draw the shear force for this pretty simple there is no force in between there is a shear force equal to P here constant over this delta region and goes to 0 at this region alright. How about the bending moment diagram? <coughs> Let me make it small so that I can draw the bending moment diagram. Bending moment diagram if I take any particular point over here and I ask the question is it in equilibrium the answer is no I should have applied I should have applied for example I should have had a cantilever or something like that which is nothing but the hand that is holding the sheet of paper alright. <coughs> there is a, a moment that appears over here. But then if I look at only between these two and look at this particular side I cut it off like this the moment is P times if I take the distance from this as X it is P times X alright. So, it is some kind of moment like this and at this particular point it is P times delta. Okay. What do I know about delta? Delta is very small, very small compared to the total length of the paper and all this. So, and therefore P delta will be 
very small and therefore I can say this is roughly equal to 0. So, in this particular case of applying force using a pair of scissors all I am doing is all I am doing is applying a shear force equal to the force that I have applied through my hand okay and therefore I have a situation of nearly pure shear force. So, I am applying a pure shear force on this and that is enough to cut the paper okay. As delta becomes smaller and smaller the efficiency of this scissors will become better and be better okay. <coughs> now there could also be a situation where you can have pure bending moment okay for whatever reason. I <coughs> will give you one example of that this is usually called either two point bending or four point bending. It is a situation like this. <coughs> this is a force P, this is a force P acting at L by 3 away as shown here okay. What will be the reaction? Reaction is P and P over here, all right. <coughs> if I take the bending moment variation in this region, let me call this as A, B, C, D. Let us first draw shear force diagram, I am going to focus only on this zone BC, okay. If you notice there is a P over here like this like this and then this is P and I have to bring it down by P this is negative and it is going to be 0 over here and I have a positive P shear and it ends like this. So, I have a negative shear and a positive shear but if you notice in between you have a zero shear situation how oh, about bending moment, bending moment diagram you will find that the bending moment diagram can be written like I have just copied over here. If I take a section in between this P and this P both form a couple equal to P times L by 3. So, I can just replace this by a couple equal to P times L by 3. Similarly, these two form a couple which is P times L by 3 there is no other force acting therefore in this particular zone it is a pure bending moment acting <coughs> just to make it clear here you have like this I am cutting close to C close to B and C and it reveals just pure bending moments equal to P L by 3 and P L by 3 and therefore any other section here will be equal to P L by 3 and therefore we have a constant moment within this zone B C okay which is a positive equal to P L by 3 okay. Thus we can generate uh, pure bending situation this is called the pure bending situation. Why pure bending there is no shear there is no axial force 
the only force resultant that is present is pure bending okay <coughs> now question if I move this particular set anywhere around do you think I will generate constant bending moment over that BC for example instead of this being L by 3 L by 3 L by 3 supposing I moved to something that is a distance A from the left hand side retaining this as L by 3 do you think I will have a constant bending moment over here please find out by yourself okay. Now let us look at different scenarios of loading that can uh, appear on a beam okay. <coughs> Supposing I ask this question let us say this is a simply supported beam immediately I can draw like this let us say it has its own weight to be taken okay. So it is own weight let us say it is weight per unit length. given okay <coughs> there is nothing but mass times the area of cross section per unit length. <coughs> now how do I represent it people represent in different ways one of the simplest ways in which you can represent is draw something like this and say this is equal to W per unit length <coughs> they also represent it using a diagram like this okay. We call this as uniform because it is let us say if it is a uniform cross section it is a uniform uniformly load distributed load what is the direction of these loads transverse to the axis of the beam okay mind you it will always be transverse to the axis of the beam if I am taking this particular structural member system to be a beam all right <coughs> and therefore the reaction support reactions also will also be perpendicular to the axis of the beam. Another situation is for example I have a beam like this okay let us say it could be a wall all right and it is basically supporting a column of water. okay and if I have to find out the distribution of force on this particular let us say beam it could be a wall basically can, can be idealized to be a beam <coughs> what will be the force on it supposing I take this to be unit length. then at, at the top I have no pressure as I go below it will be gamma times gh where gamma is the <coughs> specific weight of specific mass of this particular weight. So in this wall since the pressure is acting this side the load should be distributed like this equal to gamma gh okay gamma g is the the specific weight times the height that will give you the pressure at any particular point and that is acting 
remember this h is varying with from this and therefore it is a linear variation over here. You can also imagine if you have a cross section that is varying that will introduce variations in the in the uh, load. Simplest example could be supposing I have something like this and a beam with a cross section of this sort. I know the unit weight per unit length is varying from one end to the other and this will introduce for example if the cross sectional area A is varying linearly from here to here then the load also will be varying linearly. Right. This W per unit length is now a varying load. So I, I should write this as W of X per unit length and then define what is W of X. Okay. <coughs> the third type is the type that you already know. For example, if this is a platform and a man is standing on, on top. the weight of the man can be replaced by a load equal to his weight right and this is usually called a concentrated load. The width over which this load is applied is very small compared to the length of the beam that you can take this to be a, a, a load which is a pointed load or a concentrated load. So, it is also called point load for the very fact that it is acting at a point on the beam. Another case could be think of something like this. I have something like a, like a hook here and a weight is hanging over here all right or let us say the there is a load let us take this particular example. <coughs> if I have to treat this particular length as just a, a beam what I can do is I can cut it off here and treat this as a separate body okay. So, if I have to cut it off, I am revealing the internal forces over here. There is a force over here, and that will create equal and opposite force. This is very simple to solve, it this will be equal to W. And if I take moment of this force about this particular point. Let us say this distance is uh, what shall we call say C okay. in which case there is a bending moment acting in this direction and therefore I will have something like this which is equal to W times C so I can cut this off and replace with these two. a weight and a bending moment equal to W C W times C right. Now if you notice since this is a one dimensional member I can jolly well write draw a line over here represent the bending moment a moment applied at this particular point and the force up applied at this particular point as W and WC <coughs> in addition to 
a point load here you also have a point moment acting on this okay. The other situation is the scissor example that I showed you okay. Supposing you have a scissors a pair of scissors that is blunt the center of the forces will be such that will be a distance and that will apply a moment and if, if they are sufficiently uh, having a gap then you are basically applying a moment okay. That also can be replaced like this. Okay, these are the some of the loads that may appear in a beam. Okay. <clears throat> One last scenario which you may not expect in most of the situations is something like this a uniformly distributed moment let us say C per unit length. Okay, let me call this as m, small m per unit length, per unit length, say acting o, 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 over the entire length of the beam, okay. <coughs> Given this there will be combinations of these forces that will come into picture while analyzing for various structures that use beams. One of the tricky examples is an example of this sort. I have a simply supported beam. Let us say at center I have a moment acting m. Okay. Let us say this length is L and therefore this is L by 2 L by 2 all right. I need to find out the shear force and bending moments. Okay. What would be the reactions? That is not very difficult to find out. If I have to find out the left hand side reaction, I have to take moment about this. <coughs> I have anti clockwise moment here m due to this and this is a clockwise. This force applies a clockwise about this and let us say this reaction is A y this is A and this is let us say B y and this is C okay. A y times the length L. So, this minus A y times L equals 0 this implies M is equal to I am sorry A y equals m by okay and therefore I can replace this by m by l. How about this side? There is no other force acting on this free body. If this is m by l this will be minus m by l or in other words I can change this direction and write it as m by l okay and this is important to note. I have an equal and opposite forces here. In fact, they form a couple equal to m okay that is an a way of understanding okay. How do I draw the shear force diagram okay. In a shear force diagram I do not have to care about the moment that is acting on this okay. It is pretty simple I have m by l acting here and therefore there will be a shear there is no transverse force acting on this also on this and therefore it will continue to be like this and at this particular point it will dip down by m by l and this is the shear force diagram. What sense is this? Negative sense. Remember upward is negative and downward is positive is what we used as sign convention. How about bending moment diagram? Well, that is a question that most of us have problems answering, but if you think rationally it becomes very simple. Like before if I cut anywhere this is the one that is going to take part 
this m by l is going to take part in the bending moment <coughs> and it is going to have a positive sense and therefore automatically I will have like this okay positive there is no there is no transverse force on it and therefore the shear force is constant if the shear force is constant bending moment has to be linear starting from a 0 over here to a value equal to m by l times l by 2. So m by l times l by 2 is m by 2 okay at this particular point. What is the moment what is the sign of this it is equal to positive okay you can use the trick that I uh, told you earlier in order to find out for the right hand side instead of taking a section that is this you should take this section that is to the right I have a force acting downward so if I have a force acting downward like this and I wish to find out the bending moment what is the positive sense of this bending moment is it this way the answer is yes is clockwise is positive because negative direction is this is minus x direction okay so if I need to find out this m of m at x it is equal to m by l times l minus x right m by l times l minus x and therefore and if I substitute so m of x will turn out to be is it positive or negative m of x is in the uh, clockwise direction m by l times l, mi l minus x is also in the clockwise direction and therefore I will have a minus minus m by l times l minus x all right let me, let me make it clear here m of x is equal to minus m by l times l minus x sometimes I may go from Goa to Chennai so <coughs> what is the value of this at l x equal to l naturally it is equal to 0 is it going to linearly vary the answer is yes is l minus x always positive the answer is yes there is a negative sign here which means the bending moment will always be negative right it is linearly varying at this particular point it is equal to 0 and what about at x equal to l by 2 it is l minus l by 2 which is l by 2 m by l times l by 2 is m by 2 minus m by 2 and therefore I will have something like this this is m by 2 okay this is the bending moment diagram most often than not you will have a confusion over here because you have a minus here plus here uh, it does not make sense I should always have a continuous curve for m and that creates a problem here but what we have drawn here is correct please always remember this particular notion if I am drawing the shear force and if there is a concentrated load for example in this case I have a concentrated load that pushes the value of shear force by that value abruptly at that particular point I go on at this particular point I have a force and therefore it pushes it down okay similarly if I have a bending moment diagram bending moment diagram will be continuous until I re see a moment concentrated moment like this that will create a jump sudden jump here and that is the jump that you see here equal to total m, m by 2 and m by 2 total together this will be equal to this m that you have applied okay. Now the question supposing I move this m from away from the center to some other point over here let me draw it and ask you that question let us say I have moved it to 
L by 3 away. What happens to the reactions? Most often than not, if I ask you to answer quickly, you will say that this force will change, will increase compared to M by L. But if you do the calculation, it will remain M by L here and minus M by L here. Okay. This is often a confusion that you will have. I can draw the uh, uh, shear force diagram, shear force diagram will not change at all irrespective of my moving the moment over here. Okay, So, shear force diagram will be essentially the same. How about the bending moment? Having given this understanding that this concentrated bending moment will give a sense of sudden shift. <coughs> I know there is no transverse force acting here which means its derivative as I have already pointed out here d squared m by dx squared is equal to minus w by x. W in this particular zone is 0 means this is 0 d squared m by dx squared is equal to 0 means dm by dx is constant. If dm by dx is constant, m is linear in x. Okay. Okay, and therefore, this m by l will create, let me draw till this, a positive sense like this. What is this? It is m by l times l by 3, which is m by 3. This is positive moment. You can do it yourself and see. I can use the same principle that I used over here for this concentrated moment. What is this concentrated moment going to do? It is going to up because it is counterclockwise. It is going to up by a value equal to m. I already have m by 3 here which means this is 2 m by 3. I know it is linear between this and this because there is no transverse force acting and I just connect it at this end it has to be equal to 0 I finish it in no time. Okay. <clears throat> Please practice a lot of these if you have to immediately solve some problems okay. and then by practice and understanding how these intricacies are useful you will be able to solve the problems faster and correctly. Thank you. Let us take another simple example this time using a distributed load. Okay. So, it, this is also a simply supported beam with self weight acting on this. Okay. Let us assume that the cross section is uniform all through. So, we have a uniformly distributed load. So, we can draw something like this. Okay. <coughs> How do I draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for this? Now, if you look at it, we have force everywhere. So, unlike the other case where we had two concentrated loads and we were able to separate them. Here there is no need to separate, there is no distinct change that is occurring from one point or one zone to the other zone. Okay. <coughs> so, let us now start to draw uh, shear force diagram. Let us adopt the method that was given earlier. <coughs> I take an x from the left hand side I need to take a section. So, what I have basically is the sulphide acting on it cut at a distance x there is a reaction over here let us say this sulphide is w per unit length and let us say this total length of the beam is L and therefore, 
the reactions will be W L by 2 W L by 2 okay. So W L by 2 and what is is it W L by 2 the answer is yes because W is per unit length and this is act over the entire length L so the total weight is equal to W times L and since it is symmetric immediately I can distribute half and half here okay and therefore it is WL by 2 here and this is W per unit length. Upon sectioning I should be revealing the shear force again I am drawing the positive sense of these the shear force and the bending moment at x. Okay. What is the shear force on this? It is if I take this to be positive sigma v along the y direction if this is y is equal to 0 implies W L by 2 minus W times this length is x and therefore W times x let me use the same symbol so that there is no confusion <coughs> plus V of x is equal to 0 and this immediately gives us V of x is equal to W x minus W L by 2. Okay. This can also be written as W into x minus L by 2. Notice here unless x goes to over L by 2 this value is negative okay. So we have a negative shear till half the distance and the rest of the distance will have positive. <coughs> now do I need to write separately for this half not necessary this will completely give the value given x varying from 0 to L okay. So how do I draw this <coughs> if you look at this this is a linear variation in x okay at x equal to 0 it is W L by 2 and that is naturally true because I have a W L by 2 over here okay. <coughs> so this is W L by 2 and then we have a uniformly decreasing value to this right at center x equal to L by 2 V of x is equal to 0 from this and therefore it passes through this and it is linear we have something like this <coughs> started with W L by 2 and this is a negative it becomes positive and finally we close this with W L by 2. Okay. <coughs> Bending moment diagram. How do I draw the bending moment diagram? Again, the same principle. Let me use the same free body diagram over here. In order to find out M of X, I should choose this point over which I find the <coughs> find the equilibrium of bend moment. Okay, so M at X equal to zero. Okay, this will give me V of X will not take part. W L by two will take part in the clockwise sense, and therefore I have minus W L by two times X. Many times people may forget this X. Okay. And how about this? This is uniformly varying, uh, uniform, uniformly distributed self weight over this entire length. Now there are two ways of doing. You can integrate from one end to the other. The other way of doing it is 
<coughs> the total force can be replaced by this equal to W times x right because that is the total force and that is acting at the center of this x which is at, at a distance x by 2 from this x. So, W x times x by 2 will be the moment created by that and that is in the anti clockwise sense. So, we have plus W x times x by 2 okay and this is a positive moment equal to 0. So, this will give us m of x is equal to W L W L by 2 x minus W x squared by 2 okay. You can also write this as W by 2 into L x minus x square. You can take the x also outside and write it as L minus x times x okay. Look at this symmetry L minus x times x. If I go from the left hand side it is x, if I go from the right hand side it is L minus x. So, it is L minus x into x. If I put x is equal to 0, this entire expression is equal to 0 because x equal 0 here. If I put x equal to L, this will go to 0 and therefore, the entire expression is 0 okay, <coughs> which is true because these two points are simply supported points okay. Now, anywhere in between what is this uh, sense of this particular uh, value? X is a positive value, L minus X is also a positive value as long as I, I am between 0 and L and therefore, this entire thing is a positive value okay. <coughs> positive we denote by down below. What kind of variation is this? It is a quadratic variation okay and therefore, primarily I will get something like this. Okay. How about at the center? What is the value at the center? The value at the center is x L minus x is L minus L by 2 which is L by 2 times L by 2. L by 2 times L by 2 is L squared by 4 times W by 2 you get W L squared by 8. So, this is W L squared by 8 parabolic variation okay. <coughs> 0 at this point and this point and this is a positive value. There is one thing that you should note over here at the middle the shear force is equal to 0 whereas bending moment is the maximum all right. Shear force is linearly varying whereas the bending moment is quadratic okay. There is <coughs> the previous examples that we solved we had constant shear forces and the variation of bending moment was linear. For a constant we had a linear for a, for a linear shear force diagram we have a quadratic. There seems to be a relationship between these two diagrams and that is what we are going to explore next okay. Before doing that I have one simple question and that is this. I have something like this as shown over there this is uniformly distributed load due to its self weight W per unit length. Can I find out the total resultant force on this? The answer is yes and if I replace this uniformly distributed load with that it is nothing but the total weight acting at this particular point okay which is equal to m times 
G, where M is the mass of the entire body. So let me use a capital M, right. The question is can I use this diagram in order to draw bending moment and shear force? The answer is natural, the answer is no because if I cut anywhere here what I have is a constant shear force and linear bending moment which is not the story over here okay. This is a common mistake done by many so I just want to point this out. 